Here are the components that you'll be needing for the mint tin mixer. You're going to be needing three stereo potentiometers, what we call in the business pots, and uh, three one eighth inch headphone jacks. That's what the industry uses for uh, mini audio connectors, basically, and then one out. Uh, obviously, it would be great if we could be using XLR plugs, but being stereo, we just don't have enough uh, horizontal space on the Altoids pins to pull that off. Hey guys, I have here uh, just a standard Altoids mint container. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark it here three quarters of an inch for each one of these uh, lines that I have. We're going to be putting our potentiometers there. And here along the top, I'm going to be also three quarters of an inch between each line. Uh, I'm going to be putting our eighth inch stereo plug-ins. And then I'm going to have an audio out here on the side. Next up, we're going to have to get some holes uh, in the areas that we marked. Uh, normally you'd use a punch for this. I've got a finishing nail handy, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Uh, you don't actually need to, to puncture through here. You just need to give it a light tap. This will go ahead and give the bit or drill, drill bit uh, enough of a dimple. through this relatively easily. Uh, pretty hard to put the block in right there so I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. Again just a light, a light tap will do the trick. You're not trying to actually puncture the tin at this point. That's what the drill bit is for. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drill these holes. All you need to do, uh, we're going to drill them relatively slow. I'm using a 3 32nd bit. And that's what we don't want. We wouldn't want to destroy this. Don't be using a big bit. You'll be going through it relatively too fast. You could hurt your finger. Nice and slow. There we go. Again, these are for the potentiometers. And from the top, once again, nice and slow, just fast enough to get you through it. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. And the last one. There we go. I'm going to be making each one of the holes for the potentiometers a little bit larger. Uh, I'm going to start out with a 1 8 inch drill. I'm going to work my way up to a 5 30 seconds drill bit and then all the way up to quarter inch which should be enough to uh, thread the post of the potentiometer through the lid of our Altoids tin. With the pilot holes drilled, I'm expecting this to be fairly easy. Again, just like before, when we were just drilling through the dimples, we're going to take it slow. It is going to contort and warp the lid of the Altoids container just a bit. We keep a firm hand on it. We're not going to re-drill these other holes yet. Now the 5.30 seconds. go. You can kind of tell how it looks like it's been shot by a bullet through the back side. Uh, I do have a way to clean that up. Okay, now to get rid of the, uh, the bullet hole look, we're actually going to employ the uh, piece of scrap wood. And we're going to come at it from the other side. Be careful with this at this point because it is going to try to grab that metal and you could cut yourself. OK. 
Okay, that's one of them. And the second one. Now the third. There we go. Now that we have the holes drilled out, you can see that they're still a little bit warped. I'm going to lightly take a hammer here and kind of bang them back into condition. We don't have too many rough edges holding up now. I do have one on this one, so I'm going to turn my block wood block over. Give this a decent little tap. And you can see some slag or shrapnel on that one. We'll go ahead and take care of that. And we'll take care of this one. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to do some cleanup there with a file. I think we're looking alright for the potentiometers. Okay, I think you can kind of see it here, right there. The potentiometers, besides the post or the shaft of the potentiometer, they have another small um, lifted riser here that uh, helps steady the potentiometer in its spot. So we have the main shaft areas drilled here. I've went back and I've used my my finishing nail to punch a small dimple into the lid of the tin and we're going to drill those out so this riser uh, can, can easily poke through and hold the potentio meter uh, steady inside the lid. I'm using a 3 seconds inch drill bit to do the dirty work here. There we go. Now I may, you may need to oval these out if this hasn't been properly measured or um, if, if the potentiometer just isn't sitting flat you may need to oval these out a little bit to get that riser to uh, properly poke through. Okay, just to show this off here, we have the uh, riser and the post of the pot. Uh, these three pots will be lined up here. Well, heck, I'll just show you. There, if you do all of your measurements right, at three quarters of an inch between each one, your potentiometer should uh, be equidistant from one another. It looks like this one on the left took a little bit of a walk on me. I'm okay with that. I've got plenty of room in there in order to make my uh, solders, soldering joints. Next up we have to worry about the um, stereo plugs. Okay, uh, same thing as before except this time we're stopping at 1564. Uh, we drilled these pilots at 3 30 seconds. We're going to be drilling it out at 1 8th, then 5 30 seconds, then 15 64. Let me get going on it. Drill that one out. We go again you want to take it slow you don't want to cut yourself and five thirty seconds and fifteen sixty fourths unfortunately is going to chew this box up a little bit. Again, take it slow. Don't cut yourself. So here's a shot of the mint tin mixer uh, with uh, most of its physical assets in place. We we take a look inside the tin. Oh, this, this feels good, by the way. I mean, it's... Um, Still feels like a mint tin, but uh, feels a little more stout. It's got some weight to it, so I feel like I can uh, probably adjust these pots with one hand once I have uh, all the wire and soldering done inside to add a little extra weight. Uh, we'll be running our ground along the top and over here to the side of the uh, eighth inch out. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of excess wire that we're going to have to deal with because as this closes, it's of course going to shorten the distance between the eighth inch uh, stereo in and the uh, potentiometer soldered points. 
Um, so we are going to have to worry a little bit about excess wiring inside of the box. We do have a little one inch by one inch space here where there's nothing at inside of the tin. And if we have to, uh, we can use that, that space for a uh, small amplifier circuit. Uh, we are using a uh, rat's nest uh, wiring scheme, so there are no circuit boards inside of this uh, small mixer. It's all going to be wiring, pots, inputs, and outputs. With the components in place, you may want to line the bottom of the tin with electrical tape. Well, our connectors are not carrying current, they are carrying audio signal, and we do not want them to touch ground. Okay, we need to tin the ends of these wires. It's pretty easy to do. We just go ahead and get a load of solder on the tip of the soldering iron. Little dab will do you, so just uh, let's go ahead and put brush a little bit on there. Maybe a little more than that. There we go. It's a light tinning. We do this to all of the wires. You're going to need three for the potentiometers. Uh, left and right, actually, so six. And then six going from the uh, potentiometers to the out headphone jack. Again, just a light tinning on all of the exposed ends. And then we got a little more work to do actually because we have to put um, some 1K resistors in line. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Okay, the um, Six wires that run from the uh, in jacks to the potentiometers have been made. Now I'm making the um, the wires that are running from the potentiometer back to the out. Uh, this is significant uh, because there is a 1K uh, resistor in place. Uh, so you're going to need to solder that in. You're going to need to make sure that these joints are pretty good. Uh, you still want enough wire in there that things bend around and uh, eventually we will be putting a piece of shrink wrap on this in order to uh, uh, keep that resistor uh, away from hitting the lid and making any shorts. Okay, now that the uh, resistors are in place, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink the shrink wrap around the, around the wire. Uh, I would be doing this with a heat gun or hair dryer inside the house, but the wife is asleep, so uh, I'm out in the garage trying to finish this up with a soldering iron. Not the best of techniques, but it does work. You want to go ahead and do that uh, to the remainder ones uh, up there in the top right. Okay, I'm about finished with the uh, wiring here. You can see that uh, I still have to do the green side, which is this one. So we've got uh, brown orange and green. I've got uh, dotted brown and brown going to the in posts in on the potentiometer here. And then I've got uh, dotted brown and solid brown heading over here to the uh, stereo plug. Uh, and in that line are the 1K resistors. Same over here with uh, orange. Orange, same deal, uh, dotted orange and solid orange coming in from the input, going up to the left side of the potentiometer, it is inverted here, uh, and then the interior prongs are out from the potentiometer over to the eighth inch uh, headphone plug. Uh, that is about as much wiring as you're going to need to do for each. Now, if you're uh, super concerned about the grounding, uh, you, you got to remember that uh, this is a metal case, so the uh, headphone plug will be grounded with the other headphone plugs, and then uh, the potentiometer uh, post that comes up through will be grounding the potentiometer. Uh, if you wanted to running 
uh, grounds from the potentiometer to the headphone jack probably isn't a bad idea, but uh, being this is not a circuit board and that it's rat's nest wiring, uh, this uh, headphone plug is going to be spent for uh, additional soldering points. Uh, that pretty much does it. We'll give a little review on how it works uh, in just a minute. Okay, with the wiring all in place, we're going to have to secure this uh, this tin. Now we could do something cheesy and just put a little tape on it or something, but uh, I actually want to make it kind of nice. I've spent all this time on it thus far. Uh, what I'm going to do is tap a small uh, pilot dimple and then drill a pilot hole with a very small screw to uh, secure the lid uh, one last time. You, know, and you just need to get a little dimple on it there and there and uh, we'll put a screw through it. <laughs> 